if you can look, I'm surrounded by books made out of paper and the atmosphere in the room is 20% oxygen. So have you ever wondered why the paper doesn't spontaneously start burning? For that matter, why doesn't my hair start burning? Or even me? And the answer is a really important concept in chemistry called activation energy. You probably know that when something burns, it gives out heat. The molecules start at a higher energy than they end up afterwards. So the difference between these two heights is the energy it releases. In order to release that energy, you have to put in a bit of energy first to get the reaction going. And that energy is called activation energy. It's a bit like having to buy a lottery ticket before you can win a large sum of money. But the difference is that if you put in activation energy, you definitely will get the energy out. Whereas if you buy a lottery ticket, you may not win. The reason why, in the case of oxygen, that you have the activation energy, or part of the reason, is because oxygen has unpaired electrons. You can see our video that shows that oxygen is magnetic. And if I take the liquid oxygen, you can see I can pull it right up here. And you have to pair these electrons up to get the reaction going. Now, once you've got a little bit of the reaction going, heated your paper with a match, then the heat that is given out will make the reaction self-sustaining and it will in fact go faster and faster. And you can put the activation energy in different ways, either by heating things. You can do it with mechanical energy. You can hit the chemical mixture with a hammer. For example, when firing a gun, the hammer hits the cartridge and sets it off. Or if you strike a match, the friction on the side of the matchbox produces enough heat to get the reaction started. You can also put in the energy with light. And there is a very famous reaction where you react hydrogen and chlorine and set it off with a flash of light. The light breaks the bonds between the two chlorine atoms and the Cl2 molecule and those Cl atoms react with the hydrogen, produce heat, which then makes the reaction go off. So once you've started it, just like lighting with a match, it goes to completion, in that case with a really quite spectacular bang. When you have any collection of molecules, some of the molecules have more energy than others. And a very tiny number have a lot of energy. So when you put in heat, you increase the number of molecules that have a really lot of energy, and then they have enough energy to react. So quite a small amount of heat can have a surprising effect on the rate of the reaction. But why does it need that heat for the reactions to happen in the first place? Like Why, why wasn't it already reacting? Because there were not enough molecules that had the energy to make the reaction to go fast enough for you to realise. These books are reacting with oxygen, but so slowly that even though some of them are more than 100 years old, essentially very few of them have reacted. So some of those books are on fire. They're just on fire very, 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 very gently. They're oxidising very slowly. I suppose quite a good example is if you eat a jelly baby, or sometimes I think 
In American, they're called gummy bears. If you eat one of those, you eventually convert it to carbon dioxide and water. But flames don't come out of your mouth. But if you react them at high temperature, like Sam and Neil did on one of our videos... Oh, wow, that's it! <laughs> you get huge flames because the reaction is going very fast. And we should be able to fit not one, not two, but four jelly babies, a chorus of jelly babies into this one. Wow. Now, this brings us on to catalysts. And the major role of a catalyst is to reduce the activation energy so that you don't have to put so much energy in to make the reaction go. And very often these catalysts can be metals, for example platinum, and the platinum will absorb molecules on the surface and for it possibly make the bonds between the atoms break on the surface and then they can start reacting. And when Brady and I went to the platinum refinery, we saw large sheets of woven platinum wire that were used for the reaction between oxygen and ammonia to make nitric acid. And you can see it's got really quite a nice herringbone pattern rather nicer than my suit. You would make a nice suit. And uh, these big sheets of platinum could be used on an industrial scale to lower the activation energy for this reaction. The whole point of a catalyst is that it can take part in the reaction, but it ends up in the same state it started, so it can catalyze the next molecule reacting. But you mentioned before that platinum was forming a, an actual break of bonds. Is the platinum involved in that chemical reaction or is it just its presence making those bonds break? Well, if you think about it, in the bulk of the platinum metal, the, you can imagine the platinum atoms are bonded together and those on the surface don't have neighbours because they're at the edge. So they have, if you like, dangling bonds, which the oxygen can bind onto. So there is a transient reaction, a short-lived reaction, but at the end, the oxygen leaves, leaving a space for the next oxygen atom to come in, or oxygen molecule to come in. Are there reactions where the activation energy is so high that the reaction only happens while you're pouring in activation energy and once you remove the activation energy, it can't be self-sustaining? Well, this applies to what is called endothermic reactions. These are reactions which, rather than releasing energy, require energy. The energy of the products is higher than the energy of the starting material. And in that case, you have to keep on pouring in energy to make the reaction go most reactions tend to be exothermic. Uh, do you get exothermic reactions where the it's so close to zero, it's only just tipped over into exothermic that you have to keep pouring in energy anyway? Yes, they're, they're reactions that go from very endothermic to very exothermic, and there are quite a few that don't give out very much energy at all. The reactions of many organic compounds are not very exothermic. They have um, an activation energy, which means that around room temperature, if you increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, the rate of the reaction approximately doubles. So if you heat it up by 30 degrees, the reaction will go eight times as fast. It is, if you like, the fact that organic compounds do not have very exothermic reactions, except of course if they burn, that allows you to build up very complicated organic molecules. Inorganic molecules tend to have much more exothermic reactions, so they release their energy in one great whoosh and they've exploded or burnt or whatever. 
Do you prefer exothermic or endothermic? Well, if you want to do a good demonstration that makes our YouTube viewers say wow, there's nothing to beat a good exothermic reaction. <laughs>